I'm going to start with a spline and that spline is going to be a helix. So let's click and hold on the rectangle icon and release on the helix. I will firstly set the start radius to 15. I will do the same thing to the end radius. Let's type in 15 and then increase up the end's angle to something like 6000. Now that we got the helix set up, we can start to turn this spline into a mesh. To do that, I will firstly drop in a profile. So that profile is going to be a circle. Then I will scale that down. And while the circle is selected, I will hold down Alt and put it into a sweep object. Then all I need to do is put the helix below the circle. Let's enable the wireframe mode, select the circle and scale it down a bit more. And as you can see, the density is just too high for such a simple and small object. So let's select the circle, go down to the spline interpolation, make sure that this is set to uniform and simply lower down the points to something like one. I will do the same thing to the helix, select it, go down to the interpolation and set the points to one or two. In this case, you can set this to two to, to hold up the original shape of the helix. And this is basically it. Now to extrude the end point of the helix, we need to we need to make that helix editable. But once I do that, as you can see, I lose all these options of the original helix. So this is the time that we need to make the final adjustments to the helix. For example, we can increase up the height to 300, which means that we need to increase up the end angle to something like 8000. So once you are happy with the helix, just make it edible. I will tap C. Now I can go into points mode and select the last point of the helix. And what I want to do is select the move tool, hold on control and extrude that point along the Z. To adjust that point, let me go to the right view, select the rotate tool and rotate it. I will select that point as well and move them along the Z. I will select these, rotate it, and finally, I will make the final extrude. And to flatten out those points, I will select them and scale them along the Y. All right, that looks quite nice to me, which means that we can start to work on the second object. We need another spline, a circle, so I will add this one in, then go to the top view and change the orientation to X and Z. Then I will roughly center this object and scale it down. Let's move it somewhere around here and make it editable. But the problem is that that circle doesn't have enough resolution for me to edit in a way that it becomes the shape I want. So I need basically more points. So I will select every point, Control A and subdivide them. Now I have more resolution to play around. I will also go to the circle and turn off close spline, which is going to open up that door for us. I just want to align this object with the world. I mean that open gate. I will do this by eyeballing and I will go into points mode. I will select that point, right click on one of these axes and set this to world. I will simply hold on control and extrude that down. Unfortunately, extruding spline points is not as easy as extruding mesh points. If I hold on control, and extrude these at the same time, it will basically duplicate those points and create a new spline. So we need to do that one by one. Hold on control, extrude one more time. To level these up, I will scale them to zero along the Z. Now I will select those points. By the way, uh, the tool that I am using to select those points is rectangle selection. You simply tap zero on the keyboard to grab it. Then I will tap T. Scale them to zero along the X for the last time. And then lastly, I will select those points and scale them along the Z, which is going to give us those nice roundings. Okay, that looks nice to me, which means that we can turn these into a mesh again. So why don't we just duplicate that sweep and replace the helix with that new circle? We need to adjust the new circle because it is again too dense. So let's select the circle. Make sure that this is set to uniform again. The reason is we are working in subdivision surface workflow and the uniform is the best option for this, for this workflow. 
it basically even things out. Now we can select the circle, scale it down. We can adjust this to your liking. I mean, you can still go back to the first sweep, select the circle, which is the profile of the helix, and you know, play around with the size of it. Now I will select that new sweep. Actually, let me call this metal and this one cable. And I will move that down. You can notice that the gizmo of the object is at the center. So to center the gizmo to the object, what we can do is enable the access mode and place the gizmo by eyeballing. I don't need a very accurate adjustment, so this will be okay for me. I will turn this off, then move that down somewhere around here. I think the second sweep, the metal needs more resolution, so I will select the circle and increase up the points. I think we can start to work on the last detail, last object. So this time around, I will duplicate the metal and make it edible. I am doing this so that I can grab these polygons. It will selection, invert the selection and delete these points in the middle. I just want to turn this mesh into a tape and I think this is the best way to do it. So let's solo the object. Double click on those loops across and reach them. I will also increase up the subdivision to something like 2. Let's do it one more time. Bridge tool, connect those points. And we can turn off the solo mode. I will double click on that loop, hold the control, extrude that, and apply the fit circle tool. Select the mode tool and move it a bit further. And then I will select the mesh, hold on control, extrude that loop. We can delete those unnecessary tags and call this tape. Okay, the next thing I want to do is select everything, control A in polygon mode and scale them along their normals. So right click, go all the way down to the normal transform, select the normal move tool and extrude these up. And now let's drop in a null and group those objects because I want to subdivide them at once. So select the null and click on sub the icon. I will go back to the tape, go into edge mode, double click on that edge loop. Scale them, then hold the control, scale them one more time. I will move these up. Can also make another extrusion. And then let's do the same thing here. And then I will go to the top view, select those polygons in the middle and scale them. So then the, the tape looks more believable, more realistic. Make sure that nothing is sticking out. So maybe we can Select those points only and scale them up. I will also select those ones and move this down. Just to make it look like there is something underneath the tape. Now let me do the same thing to the other end of the helix. By the way, before getting into that, we need to, I mean, don't need to, but I will Go to the cable and turn off the caps. All right, now let me create some basic materials. I will drop this one on the cable and set this to something like that. It already looks nice so we can duplicate this i will just increase up the roughness because i want to use this on the on the tape so let's draw this one on the tape okay lastly i will create a new one and drop this one on the metal as the name suggests it is supposed to be a metal so i will increase up the metalness then pick up a lighter color and lower down the roughness I see some sticking out parts on that end, so let me select these and move them around. Yeah, 
then that is better. The next thing I want to show you is how flexible is the spline workflow in Cinema 4D. For example, I can pick up that circle and go into points mode. I will tap S on the keyboard to, to, to zoom in that selection. Then what I want to do is show you some features of the spline workflow in Cinema 4D. It is incredibly easy, straightforward and quite adjustable. I mean, for example, I can select those points and disconnect them. This will basically create any spline, but what we can do is select that point and delete it, which is going to open up that gate. And what is more, we can enable the wireframe mode, go to the metal spline and play around with the options of the caps. Like we can change the flow by setting the tessellation to quads and we can go to the shape, set the step and increase up the size. You can see how it is easy to, to manipulate the splines. For example, I can select those points at the top and change the interpolation to heart, which will make it possible to bevel these out as precise as you want. Like we can right click, select the chamfer and bevel these out. We can move these up. And the good thing is the workflow is so forgiving, like I don't need to hit Ctrl Z to go back to where I started. Like I can select those points and weld them in the same place. And then select those points and set their interpolation to soft again. I really like the spline workflow. It might be the best thing when it comes to modeling in Cinema 4D. The last thing I want to show you is how you can bend this object. So. Let me drop in a bent deformer and increase up the strength so that I can know where it is bending. I will rotate this 90 degrees, then I will drop this bent deformer under the null. I will scale it down and move it somewhere around here. I will also play around with the size of the bent deformer. And it is that easy. Make sure that the mod is set to limited. But I should mention one thing about the bent deformer. Unfortunately, it has a limitation. I mean, if I go to the top view and increase up the strength up to the point, we can see that we are losing the original shape. If I increase up even further, it is going to be more visible. This is happening because we are deforming a cage, if that makes sense. The proper way to bend this helix is to put the bent deformer under the helix. So if I do that, and increase up the strength you can see that no matter how much i increase up the strength i am able to maintain the original shape of the helix but the problem is that as you can see those objects are not following the end point of the helix you can probably set up an express or workflow but i'm not going to get into that in this tutorial but if you want a simple deformation or bent operation you can simply Try to bend the whole thing. Before finishing up the tutorial, let me find this object. By the way, if the subdivision surface is enabled and you have multiple objects under it, you are not, you cannot select individual objects by clicking on them. So what you need to do is double click. Let me turn off the geometry only. I will click off. If I click once, it is going to select the whole subdivision surface. But if you double click, it is going to select the object that you want to select. And in this case, I want to go into points mode. Because of the bent deformer, we are seeing the X-ray mode of the selected object. I don't think it's going to make it any harder for us. I will just move this up. All right. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.